Certain people get privileges. Some people get second, third, fourth chances. And some people, their first mistake gonna cost them their life. This is what I do all day. This is not something that you choose to do. It's something you called to do. This is like a mission. No justice, no peace. This is about no actually justice. getting in a situation, organizing families from the front room, and trying to bring a result to a bad situation. I try to work with the families of the victims. They have the energy to resolve the issue. She don't understand, but I bet you when she get older, ain't nobody gonna say her daddy did this, her daddy did that. They trying to shape a story that fits a narrative. Her criminal history, which included felony, robbery, No one asked force. y'all to say that. Right. Pat had to say his criminal past. They can make the public think that this person deserved to be shot. A lot of people don't understand how real it is. My name is Tori Lowe. I do advocacy in the state of Wisconsin. I'm the most requested advocate in the state. The issues that people come to me for could be human trafficking, missing people, violence, landlords, evictions, you name it. They get this call that something has struck their family. So when they come to me, they want me to know what to do. I say I deal with almost any problem you can think of that's harming a community. I'm an organizer. So when people, I'm by request too. So you, I don't even, people think that I, like I'll see something and I want to do that. No, I, I don't want your problems. I chose to do human interest because I was a victim of a hate crime in Minnesota. After I went to federal court and I won my federal court situation, I came back to Milwaukee and I started trying to teach people, trying to reach out to my community, trying to help them organize. Derek Williams was killed in the back of a squad car. Derek Williams said, I couldn't breathe, I can't breathe. The officers ignored him and he died in police custody. One of his family members hooked me up with his mother and we started this street movement and it, it became very powerful. When I was helping the families of Derek Williams, James Perry, mother, Angela Gardner, came on and said, hey, my son died in the county. He was having a medical emergency. They put a spit mask around his face. They let him suffocate on the floor of the Milwaukee County Jail with his pants down. And it's all on video. No I'm a part of like at least 23 different lawsuits against the city and other parts of the state of Wisconsin. When I deal with people, I already know that we're gonna have to plan and do things for at least three to four years, because that's how long it took me to deal with my situation. So I know that when I take on a situation, it's gonna take time. And both of those cases took almost 10 years to resolve. This has been going on. Before Mike Brown and before Trayvon Martin, there was a James Perry and there was Derek Williams. This is my old neighborhood, all of this. This is Sixth District. Milwaukee is one of the worst places in the country for black people to live. It's full of neglect. So every day I'm going to get a case or a situation and I'm going to post it on social media and the media is gonna call me and say, hey, Tori, can we talk to that family? And then the next day it's gonna happen again and again and again, and it never stops. Right now, my office is downtown. I'm working with Justice Wisconsin. It's a partnership between me as an advocate and lawyers across the state of Wisconsin. And we deal with issues of injustice, human and civil rights. We are approaching six months. My brother was murdered June 19th, um, broad daylight. We're trying to convict the person who murdered my brother. We're just trying to bring out awareness. If anybody know anything to speak up, people can't you know, speak anonymous. And we've been marching in the streets. We've been going door to door, handing out flyers. We're hurting. We won't stop until we get justice. Tori comes out and he walks with us and, you know, give us good advice and things like that. Especially now, around the holidays, it's really hard. So we want, we want justice for Joe. And we want a safe um, community. And I'm human, you know. Mm -hmm. I rely strongly on my faith and my belief in God. But I sometimes get weak. And I question God, like, 
Why haven't I got the justice yet? People think justice is having this big court trial and winning, and that comes few and far between. It's more than one way to make a difference. Y'all are showing everybody how to be an example of what to do when it happens to their family, when tragedy strikes, and that is something that you can't coach. You can't make somebody be this way. No. When they hear about Joe, they see an active family. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I love that to death. Right now, we're headed to Janesville, Wisconsin, for a police shooting, a police-involved shooting. The family contacted me yesterday. The mother and the mother of his child are expecting me to be there in a few minutes and I'm going to start helping them organize and get try to get more information on what actually happens right now. We don't know what took place. We don't know all the details, but we're in one of the most segregated states. And these areas, Jamesville, Wisconsin, is known to have a lot of segregation. And we just want to make sure that there was no rogue policing or injustice going on. We got to check and see, do the officers, do all body cameras work? Right. That's Dash cam, that's all of that. They told us, like, none of that, that's all off limits until the investigation is over. over. And then it'll be public records. They didn't even say, huh, we're going to hand it to you. It's going to take about at least almost eight months to nine months for us to even see that video, if not more. It was at 12, 11.42 when he got shot. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This but happened in the, right. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. This happened in the in the middle of the day. Yes. Middle of the day, he was pronounced dead at twelve twenty-five. Yes. He was shot. Hold, at hold on, all right, all right. So you telling me this happened in the middle of the day? So somebody saw something. That's where he was at. Oh, here go. You can't see nothing. So. Well, somebody was looking out the window, though. So. That's her house where he got shot. He was literally by a, a fence, shed. by a fence, by a shed. Yes. So they cornered him. We just got to get over there and see who know what, and, and, and let them know that they can they can talk, they can speak to us, they can they gonna have protection because what they're gonna do is they're gonna knock on everybody's door with the police and ask, and they gonna they gonna put fear into any witness. Like why are they saying that? Yeah, that's sick. Y'all up against a mind frame, not a situation. The mother of a car theft suspect shot and killed by police want to know more about what led up to the car shooting. Theft. Authorities have identified the man killed Tuesday, 23-year-old Monte Penning of Janesville. Police say officers began pursuing him after spotting him in a stolen car. The department says he had That's a weapon. That's not that. Officers it's shot. not what happened. Tony Monte Penning's loved ones, his mother, say Penning was generous with even strangers. Wisconsin, he was. Justice Department agents but that's all y'all got to fucking say. No one had to say his criminal past. So now he's a stolen car suspect. Right, but the investigator, y'all investigating. Why are you lying? Where's the three other people that was in the car? Where's the police that shot him? The three of them. We ain't seen his body yet. Really? No. We have not seen his body. Y'all got every right to be pissed. But I'm going to tell y'all, you got to, we, we got to play it. We got to go. No, not even that. We we can't just be emotional and, and, and arguing with their narrative. What we got to do is see what we can find. Right? And then we'll start, we'll start there. We already know what they're saying. Yeah. Let's poke a hole in it. Okay. We assessed the situation, kind of tried to give the family a way to move forward, even though at the time they're watching these negative narratives. You got to realize that the entity that caused the damage is writing the story. So today we did a lot of organizing as far as what our next you know, steps are. It's not something that's going to immediately turn around. This thing could take six to seven years to resolve. We're just taking the steps, the first steps to get justice, that's what's going on. A lot of people don't understand how real it is, how real this ache actually is. Well, the news and social media don't show 
what goes on behind the scenes. Getting in a situation, organizing, it starts out with a major situation, then two more situations add on to the pile. So here we go.